As I mentioned a little bit earlier, today is Bodhi Day all over the world, or Rohatsu, uh, as the holiday is called in Japan, which celebrates the Buddha's enlightenment. And as the story goes, after and many of you have heard me say this, but I will share it again, uh, after leading a very privileged life, the prince, uh, uh, Sautama, Gautama ventured, Siddhartha Gautama ventured outside the palace gates and for the very first time he saw suffering in the world. He had been very sheltered up to that point and he was devastated by the hunger and poverty and pain and death that he saw and he wanted to understand human suffering. So in an almost sort of fairy tale-esque hero's journey. He renounced his former life as a privileged prince of wealth, and he became an ascetic for many, many years on a spiritual quest, wandering throughout India and searching for the meaning of life. Anyone here ever searched for the meaning of your life? <laughs> this may be an old story, but I believe it's quite relatable. Uh, so, so feeling so disheartened that he couldn't find the answer anywhere he looked, finally he decided after many years to just sit down and meditate. He meditated, as the story goes, for 49 days. He sat under the bow tree, which is now known as the Bodhi tree. And when he got up from the Bodhi tree, he had been completely transformed. As legend has it, he reached enlightenment. And he did this not by seeking answers outside of himself, but rather by turning within. And his ministry and his teaching began. This Buddha consciousness spread all over the world. So we consider Bodhi Day the day that Buddhism was born. Now the Buddha lived approximately 600 years before Jesus of Nazareth. And this year, it just so happens that Bodhi Day coincides with the Christian Advent calendar that celebrates joy this week. So today, we are bringing together the wisdom of Buddhism and how we cultivate the spiritual practice of joy. The great theologian Martin Buber said, the beating heart of the universe is holy joy. The beating heart of the universe is holy joy. I believe he was onto something here. The thing is, there is a difference, my friends, between happiness and joy. Often they're sort of clumped together, right? I wish you happiness and joy. The thing is, is, is Joy, as Brene Brown defines it, is an intense feeling of deep spiritual connection, pleasure, and appreciation. So joy is not to be confused with happiness. Happiness is a very different thing, and her data suggests that happiness is a feeling of pleasure often related to an immediate environment or current circumstance. Joy, on the other hand, is very different. Joy is connected to our feeling one with the divine, or a divine connection. In our New Thought teaching here, we use the word joy, for example, as an attribute of the divine, an adjective for God, or a God quality, if you will. Researcher Matthew Kwan Johnson explained that people find experiences of joy difficult to articulate, because it's different than happiness. He hypothesizes that the very nature of joy pushes boundaries of our ability to communicate about lived experiences. He states, while experiencing joy, we don't lose ourselves. We become more truly ourselves. He suggests that with joy, colors seem brighter, physical movements feel freer and easier, and smiling happens involuntarily. Some researchers even describe spontaneous weeping as part of their overwhelming joy. I remember when my mom and I were at the birth of my sister Kelly's first child, Vivian, and the moment Vivian was born, we were there, and I remember my mother and I holding each other and weeping with joy. Have you ever had that experience where you're overcome with joy, 
One might call that a numinous experience, a divine experience of oneness. It's different from happiness. It's a very spiritually connected holy moment. I spoke last week about holy moments, how we can experience compassion and holy moments between one another. We also experience holy moments in joy with each other and also internally. Our spiritual work here, I often say, is about bringing the unconscious conscious, right? That's what we're here to do. It's about waking up to this life and being present to its holy moments. Today being Bodhi Day, I wanna share with you my favorite story about the Buddha. When he became enlightened, and he was known as the Buddha, and kings came to meet him and bow to him, and people came to him. There's a story that he was asked, are you a god? He said, no. Are you an angel? He said, no. Are you a saint? He said, no. What are you then? They asked the Buddha. He said, I am awake. I am awake. And that is what we are all here to be, awake. I invite you to awaken into the wisdom that joy is the gift from the divine and we're all invited into it. That when we actually feel joy, we are feeling the connection to something greater than ourselves. We are feeling in that moment God or the God of your understanding. So what about when things are difficult? What about when life is hard? How do we experience or cultivate or, or remotely wake up to the joy of the truth that is around us in this life when we are troubled, when we are challenged, when we are grieving? You know, um, in the beginning of this week, <laughs> I was so excited to bring you all all my tools for joy and the way that we can cultivate a greater experience of it. And then on Thursday morning, I woke up to some very, very difficult news. A dear, beloved, beloved friend of mine uh, very <clears throat> suddenly died. He made his transition. And it stopped me cold. It stopped me cold. <laughs> Um, and I thought to myself, Wait, how in God's name am I going to talk about joy on Sunday? My beloved colleague, Rev. Norm Bouchard, for some of you, you might know him. He started out as my teacher in seminary, and then he became my colleague, and then he became my dear, 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 dear friend. I will tell you that... Um, you know those cheerleaders in your life? That was Norm. That was Norm for me. The people who just believe in you, that was Rev Norm. That was him. In fact, he was actually one of the ministers that wrote a recommendation letter for my formal application for this job. <laughs> yeah. He and I would talk on the phone for hours and hours and laugh and genuinely, genuinely enjoy each other's soul and joy. There were many times with my beloved friend that I felt joy, true, true joy. So, you know, I'm still very much processing his passing. I just need to let you know that. In fact, I almost called practitioner Shelley to ask her to do the talk this Sunday. And then <laughs> I heard Rev Norm in my head, and he was like, hell no, girl. <laughs> No, you are not. <laughs> he had a wicked sense of humor. All the more reason for me to be talking about how we cultivate joy in times of grief and challenge and difficulty and heartache and pain. I was reminded as I went deeper with this, the many, 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 many memorial services that I have done where I have seen, you know, a group of people just crying in tears and then someone will get up and tell a funny story and the same group of people in the next 30 seconds are on the floor laughing. 
You know, that's part of this paradox of being human. That even in grief, the love of God is so great that we get to experience joy. Not only do we get to experience it, but I would posit that we are called to experience it, to remember it. At one point this week, I was uh, decorating over the weekend the house for the holidays, and I just had to turn off the happy Christmas music because it was just making me sad. Anybody? And then, at one point, I had to turn it on because I wanted to be comforted. You know? Therein lies the paradox of being human. So, it's one thing to set the intention to cultivate joy when things are great. It's another to set the intention when things are really painful. And these past few years have taken a toll on all of us. I don't know a single person who has said to me, I sailed through, I'm fabulous, everything's great, I haven't felt any difficulty at all whatsoever in the past three years, what are you talking about? Not one. Not one person. I would be very concerned if that happened, actually. <laughs> you know, many of us, I know because you tell me, you share with me your heart, many of us are having a difficult time this holiday season. Many of us have um, friends and family that are, that are no longer on this side of life. They're on the unseen side of life. They've made their transitions. Or maybe you are estranged from a loved one due to division that has occurred in this country. So if you are feeling any kind of grief or sadness or challenge or difficulty this season, I get it. Like, I really get it. And all the more reason, all the more reason to engage in the spiritual practices that I want to give you Today, are you up for that? Okay. So, the ways that we can experience holy joy require that we set the intention to do so. I know that that can be easier said than done, but I can tell you what I've been doing the last several days that have allowed me to be here and that have allowed me to experience joy. So, the first is gratitude. The second is being in community, and the third is being of service. The Christian mystic, Meister Eckhart, wrote, if the only prayer you ever say in your entire life is thank you, it will be enough. If the only prayer you ever say in your entire life is thank you, it will be enough. Now, we understand that we are the hands and feet of the divine. Yes? We understand that as Ernest Holmes taught, God can only do for us what God can do through us. And so we act as spirit in shoes for each other. Brene Brown explains that one of the greatest lessons she's learned from the two decades of research that she has done, understanding the relationship between joy and gratitude was one of the largest for her personally. Her data taught her that, bar none, people who tend to experience joy more often have a regular practice of gratitude in their life. Now, let me ask you, how many of us have books on our bookshelf all about gratitude that we have not yet opened? <laughs> or maybe there are a journal or two or three from Christmases long ago that are still waiting to be written in. Anybody? Anybody. So I thought I would bring you something that is tangible and doable now. <laughs> something that you can actually walk out with. You don't have to read it. You don't have to write it. It's just a matter of thinking it. Yes? Are, 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 are you open? Okay. You at home. I invite you into this as well. So everyone, just take a deep breath. And I just invite you in this moment to allow your heart chakra, your heart space to expand that center of your being, the place where love lives, your heart. Just visualize it opening, expanding. Take in another deep, easy breath. And now I invite you to bring into your heart all of the beings that you love. 
And there are so many. Just allow them to float up, to bubble up. Friends, family, coworkers, neighbors, your fur babies, all the beautiful beings that you love. Just, just allow them to surface. And as they do, effortlessly, as they move through your mind, just silently say the word grateful to each one as they pass. Ah, grateful. Grateful. Yes, grateful. Just allow this for a moment. Allow them in your mind and your heart. Bring gratitude to them. Grateful. 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 These beloveds might be here. They might be on the other side of life. Grateful. Just let them float in, grateful. Grateful. So grateful. Let this be easy and joy-filled. Grateful, grateful. You may also have places that come to you, your home, nature, the ocean. Grateful, grateful. Knowing you can come back to this practice at any time, I invite you to take a deep breath and just gently open your eyes. Grateful. Grateful. You know you can do that anywhere, at any time. No one will know. You can be in the grocery store and instead of the incessant monologuing that our brains like to do. As you're walking down the aisle, you can silently say grateful for all the many hands that brought the food to the grocer. As you're walking your dog, I walk my Malachi, grateful for the trees as I pass, grateful, grateful, grateful. You're at the dentist. <laughs> grateful. Really, it shifts things. It shifts things. This will bring holy joy to your life more frequently. You know, I used to have a real problem with the early morning folks that would come and get my garbage because I was sound asleep and it would wake me up and I would get very angry. And this happened, you know, once a week. <laughs> so I decided I would express gratitude for them. And over a period of time, it shifted. When I would hear them, I would get angry, and then I would say, grateful, 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 they're taking my garbage. I'm so grateful, I'm so grateful. <laughs> and over time, I would hear the truck, and oh, grateful, grateful. Now I don't even hear it anymore. I don't even hear it anymore. Grateful, grateful. I invite you to do this this week. If you're open, even try it for one day. Just, just be willing to make the commitment. Three times, morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are, just for a few minutes, and watch how it shifts you. Watch how it shifts you internally so that you become more open to the joy as a spiritual practice, to the deep, deep experience of joy. The second way that I want to bring to you, the second thing I've been doing consciously 
to cultivate joy, which is also based on science, is to be with people. Now, I'm an introvert. I love curling up by the fire with a great book, or meditating, or going on a walk, being, you know, with my thoughts. And I will tell you, for me, you may resonate, some of you might, it is an extra lift, especially when I'm going through difficulty, to call a friend, to be with people. Because it's not my, it's just, my wiring is just kind of like, I'm gonna retreat and pray, right? We had our concert here on Friday night. How many of you were here? Oh my gosh, wasn't that fantastic? Let me tell you something, Friday morning, Friday morning, I woke up, I was having my coffee, my heart was missing my beloved friend, my Norm, so much. I thought to myself, I can't go. I'm so sad. I'm just going to sit there and cry the whole time. I miss him so much. I'll tell you, in that moment, I heard Norm say, girl, <laughs> you got to knock that off. Come on now. You're talking about joy on Sunday. So I came and I had the best time. I had the best time connecting and hearing the music and dancing and moving my body. I called my dad last night because I was sad. And I thought, you know, <laughs> I need to be with people. I called my dad. I called my best friend the day before that. The thing is, is one of the ways that we can cultivate joy is get into a spiritual practice of connecting with people, of being in spiritual community, in community, especially, especially when things are hard. In our teaching, we talk about this often. A lot of times, I won't see someone for a long time, and then I'll see them, and I'll say, well, where have you been? Oh my gosh, I missed you, hi, how are you? And they'll say, oh, I was going through something. I just, I just didn't feel like I could come, which is the saddest thing. This is the place to be. This is the place to come. This is the place to be uplifted. This is the place, even if you sit in the back row and you just listen to the music, you know? Being in community is a beautiful way to cultivate the practice of joy in whatever way works for you. The third spiritual tool that I want to leave you with to help cultivate joy in your life is to be of service is to be of service. And I know that uh, for some of you that comes very naturally, and for others it might not. I learned from my friend Rev Norm the exquisite beauty of being in service in a way that taught me so much. In 2017 he was uh, experiencing cancer. And he would go to chemo and he realized that when he would go into the room to receive chemo, there was a lot of energy there, and it was really difficult, and it was really hard, and it was really sad. And um, so he got this brilliant idea to dress up, to actually wear a costume to make everyone in the room laugh. And it worked. Here he was, moving through his experience, serving others, talk about making a commitment to cultivating joy in your life through service. So for example, I mean, and I'm not talking like a hat, I'm talking a full-on costume. Not that long ago, he wore a, a full, I, was, I think this was his one for August, a full-on baseball uniform, like striped shirt with a bat and everything, and he would post on Facebook, knocking cancer out of the park. <laughs> And he would get all these, like, you know, and then uh, another time he dressed up as a, as a this hilarious Hawaiian, like, obnoxious Hawaiian shirt with this hat and these glasses and one of those big floaty things you float in. And his post was on floating past cancer. <laughs> we had a conversation, one of our last conversations on the phone. He shared with me that he did that for the people who were there for the first time, the people who were going for their very first round of chemo. That's primarily who that was for. And he did it every single time, every single time. The Christian mystic Julianne of Norwich wrote, the fullness of joy is to behold God in everything. The fullness of joy is to behold God in everything. 
There was so much God in that baseball uniform. And there was so much God in that ridiculously big floaty. He went in sometimes as like a duck, like all the things. I'm gonna quack cancer out, you know. There's so much God in us, in service. Joni, darling, you knit our beautiful prayer shawls. That is so much, there's so much God in that, in that activity of love. Shelly Walker, every time you come up here and you support us every Sunday, there is so much God in that. All of you, the ways in which you support your people, yourselves, there's God in that. I invite you to do whatever that is more. We say every Sunday, what we put out into the world returns to us multiplied abundantly. That goes for acts of service. What we put out into the world returns to us multiplied abundantly, and what returns to us is joy, is joy. We've all come here to experience joy and the love that that is. And this, in turn, helps us to become more enlightened, more and more that Buddha consciousness. So I want to leave you with a quote from my beautiful friend, Reverend Norm Bouchard. He wrote, there is no greater power in the universe than the power of love. The feeling of love is the highest frequency you can omit. If you could wrap every thought in love, everything and everyone in your life would be transformed. Hi friends, thank you so much for watching and I hope that this message supported you. We are a nonprofit and we do all of this based solely on the gifts that you give. No amount is too small or too large. You can text to give, you can go online and check out our website. We're doing so much. You can give that way. Thank you so much for being here, for being a part of this community and for supporting this message of bringing more light, more love and spirit-led social action out into the world. Thank you. You're loved. So loved.